Hi guys, um, it's wonderful to be here today. I will share a little bit about my personal story. I'm uh, half Greek and half German, and I spent all my summers as a kid on this island called Samos that I moved to later, um, but I will get to that uh, in a bit of time. So what you have to know about me is I'm uh, quite an introvert. I have a tech background and a political sciences background and I come from a very conservative Greek family. So um, I was in the beginning not so much allowed to actually get my hands dirty and work. It was more like, you know, go to university, maybe do an internship. And as it always is, then you develop this passion that you really want to work, right? Because it's the one thing that you're not allowed to do. So um, then that's why I set out to Africa because um, I also needed a little bit of time away from this, you know, very Mediterranean culture and I needed to be free. It was puberty, basically. And then I joined the um, Venture Bus in Africa. And with the team that I was at, we actually also won this bus. And, um, you know, since I have a political sciences background, it was just obvious that I'm not doing things that I do for the money, I do them because also I like working with people. And I really believe that um, many of these solutions that we're looking for are somewhere out there and people could actually develop them, but they have different incentives, meaning cash, right? Um, and then I thought, you know, well, I was in Africa, billions of dollars went into Africa, so money cannot really be the answer to the problems that we're facing here. And uh, we just need better solutions, different incentives, and um, different structures. And maybe the internet can provide a solution for that. So that's why I kind of changed the venture bus into the startup boat um, to say, OK, look, we're going to focus with a group of people on building you know, different things um, and um, maybe try it on these sessions, um, which is why I invited in 2015 the first team of around 18 people to this first startup boat to the island of Samos, which is, you can see here, it's a thousand meters from Turkey. And um, then we started to build an information platform for refugees um, because the topic was just, you know, exploding. There were a lot of people coming from Turkey. Um, at the same time, we had around 50,000 cancellations of people who were coming to Greece. So it was. It was a moment where personally I needed to like, you know, step out after Africa and like take a break and I just kept going and it hit, it hit me really in the face, um, this whole crisis, uh, which is why, you know, I looked a little bit like that afterwards um, because I kept doing these sessions, we kept building tools, we built a delivery service for first aid items and, um, yeah, a couple of couple of very interesting things. We also presented them at the same year in the World Economic Forum. And um, some of those things that we're building right now are here. So one is a um, mobile healthcare station. Right now we're looking also at 3D printing um, shelter um, walls, basically, to make them from short term more into long term shelters. And there's providers of shelters that um, have given me basically like a mandate to build these things and you know it's all about finding out what there is in the scrapyard on this island that I've now based myself in and then this is a um, mobile clinic with a surgery room that uh, can also go into Syria and then um, we have a more corporate so to say arm being the migration hub that is led now by an independent team. So I'm very much prototyping. I call it extreme prototyping. Um, and the thing is that we then saw um, no matter how many solutions we built, first of all, we need a structure. So that's why I started a master's in systems engineering on Coursera, which I can totally recommend. You know, if you feel lost, just listen to courses and find ways, educate yourself about things that you don't 
know about, it can really bring you further. And for me, it was in this moment of crisis the most important thing to do. Um, and then we also built an online incubation program. So actually, I found this guy who uh, built this program. You know, I look for people online. And um, we tried it out, we tested it, then UNICEF invested into it. And it was just, you know, also if you try to get involved into this field of work, people want to learn together. And if you do it with the right intentions, you can actually get very far. So I would really recommend that. Um, then one thing that I realized after working in this field is that um, you cannot look at things individually. So you need to look at uh, your problems in education, in healthcare, in um, fintech also, you know, in Greece, for example, we have 81% taxes. And then I was dealing with digital banks who take like 0.1% and, I don't know, completely dysfunctional health healthcare systems. And when you're around crazy people, which, you know, I work with people in think tanks in San Francisco as well, um, then they ask those questions that three-year-olds would ask that are completely valid, but no one would ask them. And um, this is why I started looking at things more in a macro point of view. So if you think about it, it's just a Google Drive with different subject areas. And I collect these tools, and I check them out. And then someone calls and says, hey, I want to get involved. And then you know, we see if this person fits into the team. And um, we actually got a lot of stuff done with that. But then I realized you know, we need values. We really need to bring those people together and also keep them together no matter where they are. Because the thing is also with digital nomads and with volunteers, they travel a lot. And um, they kind of, it's like they, they recognize each other. It's like you're Spanish and even if you're in Tajikistan, you would still understand, you know, if you're talking to someone who's Spanish, um, if you're Spanish yourself. That is. So um, this is why I came up with something that we then, um, this is our mission, you know, is to develop sustainable solutions for challenges related to the refugee crisis in Europe and to make society see migration as an opportunity. Um, and for this, then, you know, with these digital mig migrants that are actually volunteers who are going around the world, um, I came up with this idea of a trust nation, which is like a like a database, really, of values of intellectual property that um, are always accessible to everyone who joins this community, no matter where you are, no matter where you're building. Because in Greece, for example, we now have people who want to scale their initiatives also to Africa, but they kind of work under the same code of conduct. So that's where this idea came from. And here you can see, you know, we're actually working around the world. Um, bottom left is in Italy. Um, bottom right was at MIT, then it was at Cambridge. So there's people who are developing different things and they all work according to the same code of conduct, really. Um, then I thought that, you know, if we have this Google Drive of different projects that are organized in different ways, why don't we try something that's called a flexitocracy, which, yes, it's a word I made up. Um, but the idea is that, you know, also if you're in this field and you're in this extreme prototyping, you see different ways of organizing teams and how teams also organize themselves. And sometimes it's better to have a stronger leader. Sometimes it's better to have more like a direct participation system. So this is something that we're testing very much to really organize different teams in different ways. And if you want to talk artificial intel intelligence and like big data, then you could even say if you have preconditions of specific people who are in this team and you have a specific goal, then you can actually minimize the risk. You can calculate the risk of things going wrong. So this is like an automation, really, of a project that can lead to it becoming more successful, really. And it's crazy um, if you look at it. And then we came up with this idea of a GoBot, which is a government roboter, theoretically, that asks you questions based on your interests and based on you know the project that you're in to really understand, do you get the question? Do you really want this? 
And this would be like asking with Brexit, for example, do you really want the borders to close? You know, if you vote this, you will not be able to fly away at your next trip. So if you really have something that's more personalized in decision making, it's something that would bring us very far. And we use something that we call edutainment quite a lot, which is education through entertainment. So I'm experimenting now. Don't worry, I won't do it with you. But um, you know how to hack people's behavior, like culture hacking. Also, coming from a Greek family, it's um, interesting to try to explain a little bit what I'm doing. But there is information about this out there, and um, we're hoping to grow the database. So um, uh, <coughs> I'll share some information if you like later on. So um, yeah, basically we have different teams now. Um, we have 4.5 million euro in the next two years from a large investor that we can invest into project ourselves. Um, so it's funny because you know, one moment someone says you're completely crazy and the next moment people are like, go, invest or search for, search for interesting things. Um, we still do those sessions. It's important to bring people together, obviously also in the offline world. And um, personally, I started um, to think about uh, currency as well, because I thought that it was unfortunate that people, um, you know, they, they are motivated to actually create value based on, on money, right? And um, I was thinking that in this flexitocracy, in this trust nation, it would be nice to measure the relationships that you're in. And this is something where, um, you know, if you and I would engage in a contract and we would say, okay, 14 other partnerships might result from this, then that could be value. And this is also something that, um, you know, you could keep in a kind of account. Um, it's something that could be completely parallel to the current financial system. And um, I was thinking I'm crazy. Um, I wrote this all down, and then the assistant of Mario Draghi, who was the um, who was the director of the European Central Bank, called me up and said, "You know, we find this interesting." And then I found a mistake. I took it all back, I corrected the mistake, and now I still think I'm crazy. But um, you know, it's okay. We're slowly getting there. Now. Um, what I personally did is, um, which you cannot see on this picture, but I went back to the island in um, July of this year and I started implementing things, um, be it you know different healthcare solutions. This is a um, healthcare clinic that translates into 70 languages um, and you know provides different other possibilities. To, um, to connect you to the outside world. Now I have to bring in 10 more of these to Greece. So we did something right. We have internet now in the camp. Then the Cisco CEO flew in to actually look at everything that we did. And we started a coding academy there. And my vision is to digitize the island together with this amazing crew that we have to actually say, you know, it works. And um, we're not only talking, we're not only into theory, but we're also applying these structures in the real world. And since this is a thousand meters from Turkey, it's my perfect excuse to actually say, um, yes, I am based on this island because, you know, the investors want me to be maybe in a metropolis and talk about what we're doing. But I want to take a step back and say I'm organizing an ecosystem that currently um, really has so much potential to be digitized and there's no structure there. So if you would ever want to come and visit us, it's amazing. I promise you the sunrise is the most beautiful thing. And um, I can only encourage you to you know, get your hands dirty, um, work a little bit around 3D cables, stuff that you think you would never understand. I promise you, you will. And um, yeah, you, <coughs> you are your source of imagination. It's down to you what you do with your life. And you're more needed than ever today. So thanks.